I have today Mr. Uday from Nemadi. Now, Nemadi directly translates to peace of mind in Kannada. And as far as what I have understood what Nemadi does is they inspect your home before you move in to give you peace of mind. Is, yes. Is that right, Mr. Uday? Absolutely correct. Uh, you pronounce Nemadi correctly. Thank you. So, Nemadi is the vernacular, I just said, uh, means peace of mind. Okay. Most South Indian languages use Nemadi. Uh, Nemadi in Telugu may mean slow, in Tamil may mean it's Nimmadi. So there are different variations of the word, but essentially it means, comes down to peace of mind. And okay. that, that's what we try and give our customers. Okay. So uh, as you mentioned, our customers are primarily homeowners, okay. either in the primary market or in the secondary market. Okay. So when I say primary or secondary market, I mean... Uh, people who have bought an apartment from the builders directly okay. or people who sell an apartment from one that is your purchase to the next buyer. It could be that. Okay. It could also be people who rent apartments mm. or people who lease apartments. Okay. Uh, the way that we try and help our customers are to make sure that they get what they were promised and pay for what they get. Uh, let me explain that a bit. Yeah. So... When you buy an apartment, hmm. you get into an agreement with the builder. Okay. Right. The builder then tells you that you will have, say, uh, an area of 1,000 square feet. You will have certain specifications. So the flooring will be of certain material. The toilets will be of certain fixtures, okay. etc. Then now, apart from that, you also need to make sure that the workmanship is of good quality. Correct. So that's what we do. We help the homeowner take over from the builder. And make sure that everything is as was promised. Okay. okay. Now, I, I, we spoke of area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, earlier, there were different forms of area that was mentioned. There was super built up area. Okay. There was built up area. Okay. There was carpet area. Okay. There was saleable area. So, <laughs> okay. all of this is very confusing to the home buyer. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, you need to know what is it that you're getting. Right? <laughs> but you exactly. don't know. If you have four, five, six different variables, shall we say, then how do you know what you're getting? Okay. Now, RERA has come out and RERA is very specific on what is the common denominator. So, okay. it talks about carpet area. Okay. And carpet area is very clearly defined under RERA. Okay. okay. So, it is the net area under which you have usefulness. The exact words you can find in the RERA, this thing. But it also takes care of the thickness of the walls oh. inside the house. Okay. But not the periphery walls. Okay. Right? okay. So, people don't know about this. Right. So we help people measure that and okay. then they give you a statement. Right? So you're okay. Yeah, please please go on. So you're telling me that uh, specifically talking about area, if uh, someone is say purchasing thousand square feet, so according to Rera, thousand square feet meaning thousand square feet on which he can build furniture? Like uh, not exactly put furniture because it also takes into account the wall area, the okay. footprint of the wall inside your house, right? Oh okay. So that also is considered. Okay. okay. So that's in terms and of then area. Then you take it up, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about the other aspects? So you were saying workmanship. How, yeah. so how does let, let, let me let me uh, elucidate a bit more on carpet area, right? So say you've bought an apartment for ten thousand rupees a square foot, mm -hmm. and you've bought thousand square feet. Okay. Today nobody's got the time. Nobody knows what to check. Correct. Or even if they do have the time, it's probably or bhanja batija or an uncle or an aunt or somebody who goes and says, "Acha." Uh, let's go. <laughs> Correct. But what is it that you actually need to check? A lot of people don't know. Okay. Okay. And also, how do you measure carpet area? Because that is the basis on which you're making a payment to the builder. Correct. 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 If you're signed up for a thousand square foot apartment, mm. but you only get 990 square foot. Yeah. So that's 10 square foot short. Yeah. You're paying 10 grand per square, per foot. square foot. So you're short of a lakh. Yeah. Even before you move in. Correct. Right? So that is one of the few things that people don't understand how serious things are. So you need to measure, okay. understand. So that is one thing. The other thing we talked about is workmanship. Yeah. Uh, let, let's take an example. Now, we've done more than 2,000 home inspections okay. in Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, Bilaspur, Mangalore, every, or Cochin. So out of that, we've got gathered data and on average... A 2,000 square foot apartment hmm. has 130 snags. Snags in civil engineering terms means problems. Oh. Or things that are not what they are. Right? Okay. Or what okay. they should be. 
if there are 130 snags, <laughs> right? Imagine that it would take about 1000 rupees to get each snag rectified. So can you give me an example of a snag? Yeah, a snag could be uh, hollow tiles. Okay. It could be a chipped wall. Oh, okay. It could be, so you need to have a bush between the sliding doors and windows, mm -hmm. a felt mm -hmm. that prevents dust from getting in. Mm -hmm. That may be missing. Okay. You have weep holes on your uh, rails mm -hmm. for sliding doors and sliding windows because that makes sure that the water comes in and goes out and doesn't come into the house. Mm -hmm. That may be uh, blocked or that may not be there. Correct. And then you have uh, hinges. Mm -hmm. The hinges need to be in a certain fashion. right? All of these are small things, but nobody knows exactly all that, that needs to be checked. Correct. Now, how do I know all of this? How do we as an organization know all of this? Now, uh, we are a sister concern of a 30 plus year old project management consulting firm. Oh, okay. okay? And we've done more than 1,800 projects all over India. Oh. So we understand what quality is. Okay. So okay. we know where things can be swept under the carpet. Okay. So we know what to check. Okay. All right? Okay. Now, having been in the game for so long, mm -hmm. we understand where things can go wrong. Okay. So that is what we know. So we know what to check for and we know where things can be hidden. Okay. So you mentioned the word quality. Yeah. Uh, I generally don't associate the word uh, quality with homes. Like, okay. I, I mean... I think of quality as, I don't know, a, a well-machined phone or, you know, like a well-made laptop or something like that. So, like, can you just explain to me how quality, like, what's the link between quality and a home? Okay. So, let's talk about a homemaker. Any lady, any person who goes and buys vegetables. Mm -hmm. In India, everybody looks at the vegetable. They look, they look at it, they press it, they see whether it's ripe, not ripe, it's rotten, whatever, right? And that's a small investment. You're purchasing maybe 100, 200, 300 rupees worth of it. But if you look at a home, yeah, predominantly in India, anybody who buys a home, buys it once in their lifetime. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah. And that's one of the most expensive things that they purchase. Yeah. Okay. okay. Pretty much. And most of us, I would say 70, 80% of us will take a loan. Yeah. And then for the rest of your life, you're paying that loan. Right. But why don't we check whether that is of good quality? I mean, you're investing 70, 80, a crore, two crores in an apartment, but you're not checking. But you're paying 300 rupees and you're checking for the quality. Correct. Right? So that is the dichotomy that I don't understand. So when we talk about this to customers, they're like, wow, this is a service that exists that I didn't know of. <laughs> I'm like, obviously, I mean, think about it. If yeah. you take a car, you take a car for a test drive. Yeah. If you buy a motorcycle, you take that for a test drive. Correct. When you're buying an apartment, why don't you go in or get a professional to check it? Correct. Right? So that is what we're talking about, the quality aspects of it. Yeah. No, so I understood that. What I'm what I'm trying to understand is, okay, so let's take your example. Uh, you give an example of a vegetable. Yeah. So say maybe uh, the parameter is color, firmness, ripeness. Correct. So for a home, like what is the quality? I'm, okay. not, trying to, I'm not able okay. to understand. So in a home, when you sign an agreement, the, the home builder, the builder would say, these are the various specifications you'll have. Okay. You will have non-skid tiles. Hmm. You will have a glass partition in your shower. We will use this certain make of fittings for your shower, for your uh, faucet. This will be the kind of water faucet that we'll use or the EWC that we'll use. Okay. These will be the kinds of uh, plug points that we'll use. Right? And this is, you may have wooden flooring. Hmm. You may have a dry kitchen, a wet kitchen. Okay. All of these things are specifications. Okay. Now... When a specification is given to you, that means you expect that to be in your home Correct. when you take over. Correct. Now, is that what you've got? <laughs> yeah. You've okay. got a thousand square foot of home. Mm. Is the home thousand square feet? <laughs> right? Yeah. Are you checking that? Yeah. Do you have the time to do it? Okay. Will you spend five hours in a home checking all the things? Okay. I'll give you another example. Ma main doors, mm. mostly, if they are heavy, mm. need to have hinges on them. Okay. At a certain spacing. Otherwise, because of the weight, it'll sag and then you'll get scuffing. Oh. Right? So, you need the top two hinges need to be closed and then the other two hinges. Okay. Because of the moment. Hmm. But if that's not, then your door will sag and then you'll see that the front door is always scuffing the floor. Yeah. So, those kind of small things we yeah. look at. Oh. We can look at, okay, let's see, take an example of screws. Okay. Hinges normally have four screws. Okay. Okay. If the person doesn't provide four screws, but has only two screws, it will hold. 
बट विल इट डू द जॉब इट सपोज टू डू ओके विल इट होल्ड ऑन फॉर लॉन्ग इनफ फॉर ट्वेंटी ईयर्स थर्टी ईयर्स या You may ask, what does the builder say, right? Yeah, I mean, okay. two screws. Bacha ke kya karega? Correct. Well, let's think about. It. Let's do some math, math right? Yeah. Mental arithmetic. Yeah. Uh, two screws per hinge. Okay. There are four hinges in a door. Okay. So you have eight screws in one door. Okay. In a home, you may have I don't know twenty doors, ten okay. doors. Okay. Okay. What are there? Four times twenty, eighty. Yeah. Eighty screws. Huh. Eighty screws times four in a floor. Okay, that's two like three twenty. Three twenty. Yeah. Times ten floors. Three thousand two hundred. Okay. Okay. Times x number of towers. <laughs> okay, so say ten towers. That's thirty-two thousand. Yeah, whatever. So, right, thirty-two. Even if it's one rupee a screw, huh. three and a half lakhs is what he saves. Wow. Right, but for the homeowner, at yeah. the end of the day, it results in headaches. What I mean by headaches? Let's take this example. Okay. You've invested a a, a crore. You've moved into your apartment. you're happy okay you bring in your uh, family your wife if you have kids your kids if you are an extended family maybe your parents in law her uh, parents somebody they all come in right yeah they start living three months four months down the line you start seeing a damp spot on the wall which which is adjacent to your bedroom and the bathroom okay then there you get a shock whenever you run the mixer Your flush is not working. <laughs> okay. When it rains, the water is stagnant on the balcony. Balcony and the water comes inside. Okay. So these are all things that are happening. Now, who needs to get this rectified? You have to get it done because you have taken the possession. You have taken possession. This is today. It's a different picture because RERA mandates that quality needs to be provided by the builder for X amount of years. Hmm hmm hmm. But people don't know about it. They need to. They need to fight for your right. Right. You need to say no. This is my right. I need it. correct now but to at least understand what your rights are or to claim your rights you need to know your rights what the problems are what the problems are yeah exactly. actually yeah so now you found out that the water is not draining you have screws missing there's a shock there's dampness now then you, you have to get it rectified or call so first headache you have to find a contractor who will do that small job <laughs> because for him it's a 10000 20000 rupees job he doesn't care okay second you have to take day off or your wife has to take a day off somebody because they have to be there to see if the work is being done correct then you have to let somebody whom you don't know into your private space which is your bedroom yeah to come in and then take care of that work when they are there they will have dirty hands touch all the other walls <laughs> you have to get it repainted you have to get probably it repainted then yeah. they are working they're going to scrape the paint dust yeah. everywhere i'm sure wow. if you're married your wife would love it <laughs> the dust everywhere it's okay now all of this accumulates <laughs> to a big problem later on correct correct so there correct. is an adage in in english a stitch in time saves nine correct so what you are trying to do is educate correct. the common public that you get this done before you move in yeah so that you don't have these problems later on okay interesting so i want to understand this i mean this is such a uh, this is such a specific sort of uh company which you have built which is nemedi why did you like can you tell me a bit about how you, you know what was the trigger how did you actually okay. end up starting nemedi why okay. did you start nemedi like it, your, bit about your background as well yeah so i i uh so i was in it okay so i have a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering okay i have a, a masters a dual masters in mechanical engineering and computer science so i was working in it in in, in europe for a while and while working there my dad said look i have this organization uh, why don't you see you know how we can leverage it in what we do so i joined him in the in the pmc company that's the parent company and while working there we saw that there were a lot of people who would come and say look you've d- done this project but can you tell us when we take over our apartment whether it meets the quality okay no, but we couldn't do that because that would be a conflict of interest right okay we we are policing our own project okay so that wouldn't work yeah so we kept saying no to a lot of people and then i said look we have so many people who come to us why don't we float a different company okay so that's when we said okay we'll float a company and then we said okay what should it give our customers at the end of the day they should have peace of mind correct so instead of going with a you know western name we said nemadi peace of mind so right so that's what he said okay let's do this and let's give our clients peace of mind and we've been doing that since um, march of 2017 oh okay and uh, slowly things have been growing our biggest uphill task 
his customers don't know that this kind of service exists. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand. I mean, frankly, yeah. when I was going through your site, I was very surprised. Oh, this is this is something which should be like you know a mandated thing or something because yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a huge investment. I mean, as you said, yeah, I know right? if it's a crow. I mean, you're spending about ten thousand for our service. Yeah. Right. But at the end of the day, if you look at it, uh, if you, okay, let's do a mathematical thing. Okay. Mm. Let's let's see how much you will save. Yeah. Uh, we'll go by averages of all the inspections that we have done, so that we don't go into specifics. Mm. Um, if you were to take an inspection, let, let's say it's about nine thousand rupees, eight thousand something, nine thousand rupees is an inspection, and by averages we see that in a two thousand square foot apartment, you have hundred thirty snacks, okay, which we spoke of earlier, yeah, and we say about thousand rupees per snack, so it's one point three lakhs, yeah, is what is going to be an investment if you find problems and you don't get your home inspected. Correct. If you're paying ten thousand rupees a square foot, mm -hmm. and you have ten square foot shot. Yeah, that's another lakh of rupees. Correct. So you have two point three lakhs. Correct. Which you're saving straight from a simple. No, two point three lakhs, but you're spending nine thousand. So two twenty one. Yeah, right. Yeah, you yeah. save two point two. You save more than two lakhs for a. So it's twenty x. The is return. Your return. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's true. So I wanted to ask you this. Uh, you told me about Nemadi and how uh, you know you've done. A lot of projects. So, I mean, how many projects have you guys in, in, in inspected already? So, uh, it wouldn't be projects. Uh, mm -hmm. The different types. Okay, so we've done home inspections for individual homeowners mm -hmm. in more than eighty projects all over India. Eighty different projects. Okay. But if you see individual numbers, we've crossed more than two thousand individual homeowners. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So, so that has allowed you to build a very vast data set. Yeah, we have a lot of data based on that. Yes. Perfect. So I would like to ask you this. So you have this data. Mm -hmm. uh, what has been the most you know sort of the most common thing which most builders screw up i mean okay i i, I don't want to say screw up hmm. uh, let's let's put it uh, what is the most prevalent snag yeah that a homeowner would find in their apartment right okay. uh, based on the data that we have uh, we see that hollow tiles hmm. in a lot of their rooms is the most prob problematic and the most frequently occurring snag Okay. The second one that we see is uh, dampness. Okay. Okay. A lot of places have damp spots. Okay. Uh, we, so yeah. can you? I actually, I would like to know what what do you mean by dampness? So is it that uh, I mean water coming like? I yeah. Okay. So we have special tools that we use. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have it with me. I can get it if you want to. Huh. So we have a uh, thermographic cameras. Okay. Which uses infrared. Uh, technology to see temperature variation, and then we are able to then see uh, whether if something is damp. So to the naked eye, you can't see something is damp because the surface may have dried, but at the background it may still be wet. So dampness right? is caused because of leakage. Dampness is caused because of maybe uh, there's a leak, there's a joint leakage. Okay. Maybe there is uh, you know water that has percolated on the floor and then it's raising, or maybe oh. on the outside of the sill it's water, um, it's rained and water is coming. There could oh. be a lot of different things. Okay. Right. So, but if you see through the naked eye, you can't see. Correct. Yeah. Not everybody can see. Or it, there could be cases where just because somebody knows that you're coming for an inspection. There could be a fresh coat of paint, right? <laughs> so you would never know whether there's a dampness behind the oh. paint or on the wall. So if you use thermographic cameras, which we have, huh. in conjunction with uh, a moisture meter, right, we'll be able to pinpoint which spot is very damp. Okay. How much of dampness is prevalent? Okay. And then obviously with the experience that we bring, so we have engineers who have thirty, forty years of experience wow. on board. So they will be able to then say, okay, what is the root cause? For this particular dampness, I'll give you a, a very nice example. Uh, we had a problem where all new apartments there was a damp spot in the sill, okay, right, and it hadn't rained, okay. So why was it still damp? Damp. Yeah. Uh, we were trying to figure out, and then we saw, we realized that there were people who were curing, okay, uh, splashing water, and that splash was coming onto this building also. Oh. But. It is the only that would not have had a problem, but you know you have the sill, and then below the sill there's there's a gap which mm -hmm. needs to be packed and then properly covered up. Okay. That was open, so water was getting into that, oh. and that was then manifesting into dampness. My God. So we had to use a mirror to look at below the sill on the outside <laughs> okay. to check. 
So a lot of these things. So it, it's an interesting subject because the more depth you go into, mm -hmm. the more analysis you're able to see, and it's interesting to see all these things. Nice. So that's that's good to know. So as you said, hollow tiles and dampness were the main all things which you said. Chipping and, and things, but yeah, there are lots of them. But we would say that these are the most frequently occurring ones. Okay. So you mentioned that Rera has actually given a lot of rights to homeowners. Yeah. So I mean, like, will you just educate me about that? And you know, how 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 am I safeguarded against safe yeah, quality I, I construction? I am not. I am not a Rera expert in any okay. sense of the way. Uh, there are a lot of legal experts who can talk to you about the various aspects of Rera. Okay. In our field, what Rera can help us with is Rera mandates how carpet area is defined. Okay. Right. If somebody were to dig up the Rera and then you read the clause, it's very clearly mentioned. Second. The builder is responsible for quality for five years. Oh wow! Right, even if you take possession, but you need to be able to prove that this was not because of you or wear and tear, but because as it was, or because oh. of constructional uh, workmanship problems. Okay. So that's where we come in and we help you with that. Okay. So that's where we make sure that these things are covered even before you move in. So there is no tu tu meme because <laughs> right, you've all, you've not yet moved in. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we we set. The playing field, and Correct. then we say, "Look, boss, this is what the case is." Okay, nice. So these are the two. So I did not know that. Uh, I mean, if the house was not made properly, up to five years, you can. Uh... Yeah. So it is quality. There is a very clear definition about it: quality in workmanship, uh, structural quality, and things like that. Okay. Uh, again, uh, I would always advise that you talk to a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. To of make course. sure that what the things are. But yeah. Yes, it does have a provision for it. So. Okay. Now you mentioned that uh, you you know essentially try to provide your service when the homeowner just before he takes possession. So what are some things you feel that uh, even before he takes possession, even before he uses your services, what are some serious red flags which he should he should be aware of? You know, which like literally that that is like something which. You can't accept, which your normal layman would not know. Um, so, I don't want to make any motherhood statements, but <laughs> what I would like to say is, if you go in, mm -hmm. and then you see that they don't meet certain standards. I, I'll give you an example. Uh, we had gone to a situation where we saw that the door frame was a little not to right angles, <laughs> so we suggested that look, I think this needs to be. Made right. They said no. It's too expensive for us to break it. We will just saw the door. Right. <laughs> Instead of repairing the door frame, they just sawed the door so that it fits into the <laughs> frame. So that is a big red flag. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That is one. Second thing is that when you have a balcony, uh -huh. and if the balcony is large, okay, you need to and it's it's especially in places where it rains, right? Yeah. You, there's a lot of water that comes in. You need to have enough downtake pipes for the water to go. Okay. If there is not enough, or at least if the diameter is not big enough, then water doesn't go in. Oh, it'll get stagnant on it the balcony. It'll stagnate on the balcony. It can come into your house. Okay. So if, for such a big surface, you need to have at least two. Okay. And what if there's one and then the slope is in the wrong direction? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So we've seen those cases too. So okay. you, you need to be careful of that. Those things. Yeah. So you you said me you told me that you've almost uh, gone through two thousand projects two thousand plus, plus homes home two thousand plus apartments yes apartments so I mean what's the without naming any names what's the worst thing you've seen like absolute worst you were like this is just yeah I so like I talked to you about the door frame then you have the dampness uh, yeah. parts um, we've seen cases where the, the dampness was so prevalent that there were mushrooms growing on some of the wooden floors. Oh right. So God. when we walked in, uh, obviously things have gone out of hand and okay. they were not under control. But after it was pointed out, kudos to the developer that they did make the changes and and rectify it. Okay. But it is not a welcoming sight. Yeah. Right? So it does raise a lot of red flags as to what else could be a problem. <laughs> right. So this is these are the things that we raise and then we highlight so that the home buyer is yeah. at the end of the day not gypped. They don't get true. Yeah, so they don't get uh, cheated off because I mean, let's be frank. In India, you know, most people buy a home once in a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I absolutely agreed. So mushrooms growing on wooden flooring, huh? That was yeah. the worst. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is pretty bad. Yeah, that's very, yeah. That, that's for a brand new house. 
that is for brand new houses oh my god wow okay let's okay let's let's move on to the next question so yeah. uh i would like to understand this so you've inspected so many houses and uh, of course you've given them some sort of reports certification they have forwarded to their builders and all so did the builders ever end up contacting you for your services because okay so um it's a logical progression so what we do is we do we avoid conflict of interest as much as possible okay we are very ethical in what we do we don't excuse me we don't uh talk to the builders if we are providing service for a individual client also there have been cases where the builders themselves come and say look we understand your service mm-hmm. uh, third party quality is something that we want to engage in mm-hmm. so why don't you inspect our complete construction mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. before handover mm-hmm. so this is very interesting because we have builders say look our crm team uh, will have a easier throughput because we've already look at the, looked at all our apartments in the point of view of the customer Mm-hmm. so we have a team that will go through all these apartments do a thorough check like a customer is looking at it and then give a report now this report then goes to the projects team mm-hmm. within the builder the builder then gets all these rectified then we do a second round of inspections to make sure that it has all been rectified oh nice right? so you are working with builders yeah, yeah well. we are working with builders where we provide uh, uh, this service excuse me hmm. but if we are providing the service for a builder mm-hmm. then we don't provide the individual home inspections to the client for that project for that project okay yeah that's fair yeah. that's uh, because avoiding we, any conflict of interest exactly so we provide a third certif- certificate saying that look this has been third party certified mm-hmm. and according to business standards according to practices general practices and norms this is the quality there is no problem that we can see okay fair enough nice then the, the advantage of that is when the client comes in right they don't say oh this is a problem that is a problem so they they have a easy sale through of taking over the possession mm-hmm. the uh, the biggest thing that the clients have seen is there is n- there is not much chit chat negative chit chat from clients on social media theek <laughs> hai yeah. so because you're living in the it capital of india of course something goes wrong immediately these guys go on whatsapp facebook whatever and say look this construction quality is so poor correct but if things are good at least that is silent true true right? true and also the crm team doesn't get blindsided by things mm-hmm. because they've already know what the problems were and mm-hmm. they've been rectified so they now know that things are taken care of true actually yeah now that you point this point this out i mean a lot of times i guess builders and developers do end up outsourcing a lot of their work so they they may not have already done that you know level of detailed inspection then that would be the reason that the client has got a bad home or a bad property like correct me if i'm wrong isn't that how it works uh, so it's a very nuanced field so i i won't comment on them subcontractors the subcontracting is something that always happens mm-hmm. but at the end of the day quality is what matters and the co- company is responsible for delivering quality correct but how you manage quality is always in your hands exactly right? yeah. quality is free until it becomes bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> because to rectify something that's poor takes a lot of time you yeah. have to invest again in redoing the work okay. in demolishing in reconstructing exactly. material cost then manpower cost opportunity cost so all of this accumulates over a period of time correct but if you do work i mean whatever you do if you do it with good quality the first time that's all it's going to cost okay right? nice that's that's good to know so uh i want to i actually want to understand this there's a very negative connotation with builders developers and contractors in india now i i want to actually understand this you've interacted with them you've worked with them typically right when you're able to say point out faults or quality issues what what has been their reception do yeah. they aggressively <clears throat> like how, how does it work is this negative connotation actually justified so there are obviously in a in a vast country like ours yeah so you have the whole spectrum of developers correct you have people who welcome us because they want to grow correct they want to know where things could have gone wrong correct. and they improve on their quality correct. and we've seen that those developers who engage with us and then do their projects sell through even in this kind of an economy has been much better mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. people talk look i don't have any problem there's no leakage uh, i've got the tiles that are good 
so that sell through is much better mm-hmm. then at the other end of the spectrum you have people who are banning third party inspections altogether oh. which is not legal in my understanding because it's the right of the homeowner to know what they're getting yeah yeah that's absolutely yeah, right so you can't say you can't get third party inspection <laughs> but there are builders who have said that oh. but then there are clients who have fought and then we have been able to provide third party inspection for them without a problem okay uh, it it all depends on how strong Mm-hmm. the client is okay to get things done okay right so uh, looking at the data here we see that we have builders who have snagged some already up to 2000 about 200 for a 2000 square foot apartment down to about 70 oh. so the the spectrum mm-hmm. is large mm-hmm. right obviously i can't take names but that is the spectrum correct 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 so even if there are 100 70 snags it's 70000 rupees if you were taken average 1000 rupees correct correct if there are 200 that's Two lakhs. Two lakhs. Yeah. Right. That's so that is. So you are telling me that you know there are a lot of builders and developers who, when the snags are pointed out, are proactive in taking action. They are proactive because they 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 know that we are we are not subjective, but we are technical in our report. Mm-hmm. Our report is very easy to understand. Okay. There is an image. There is an annotation of where the problem is. Mm-hmm. There is a clear description of what the problem is. Okay. And there is a location of what the problem is. Okay. So it is. very easy for any engineer to understand what the problem what the snag is and you know we have had very little pushback from most developers yeah that's good and to they know have, they have, they have been you know they have embraced it and it's happened so we've had places where we've done more than 100 150 in one apartment complex oh wow so obviously the builder is a, is is open to it and <laughs> we've seen that they are they are they have no problem because they respect us we are professionals mm-hmm. they are professional i mean let's think kind of it this way mm-hmm. if you're running a company you have your own finance team correct but at the end of the day you have a chartered accountant <laughs> who comes and audits them exactly yeah. before you file your taxes yeah 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 similar to that okay. you have your own quality team you have your own projects team correct but think of us as external cas who will come and audit exactly so yeah. we are not we are not pointing out mistakes we are only showing you these things may have been missed up correct correct so that is in, in a large project of course i mean at that scale at that size with so many units there would be some things which would have been missed out that and think of let's say human psychology okay mm-hmm. see mm, if you're on the same team mm. it's very rarely that you would point fingers at your teammate correct 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 so if you're on the same organization and especially if there is a senior person who is leading the project mm. and the quality guys are junior mm. I mean, in the Indian context, in the Indian cultural background, he will not say, "Arey, you have done wrong." He is going to go and say, "Sir ji, Sir ji, they, they go and that guy is going to say, 'Chup, what do you know?'" Right? And that that yeah, will yeah, only yeah. lead to complications because things get covered. Exactly. Then it doesn't go up, and yeah. people don't know what the problem. But if you have a third party, yeah, 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 there is no control over us. Correct. correct. And we report only to the management. Correct. And we don't. we don't take names we say this is only this is not this is just quantitative there is a problem you can see it Correct. we don't say that oh this may be beige it may be off white no it's not <laughs> it's just numbers it's just simple yeah perfect so i wanted to ask you this uh, you mentioned that you come from an it background yeah and you're working in a space which is essentially technology agnostic averse, averse yeah <laughs> agnostic to the i like the averse averse, averse is better yes yeah so what sort of tech have you been able to implement here and i mean i would just try to understand that because i i love tech like <laughs> and i would like to understand that you yeah. know so uh, we have we've uh, when we started off we were like everybody else we were using a pen and paper okay and we were able to do i mean cover one apartment a day okay but the problem there also is it's completely based on trust so you have you're sitting in the office you're trying to grow your business you have your engineers going on site you believe that the engineer is on the engineer is on site he is in the room taking off a point it's not that he's sitting in a coffee shop somewhere like are yaar chalo right <laughs> you don't know yeah yeah it's all on trust but correct. if that is the case then how do you make sure that that problem doesn't occur correct so what we do is we've had cases where uh we wanted to make sure that that is not the problem okay so we designed an app okay where the engineer goes mm-hmm. and he uses his own android phone okay and the checklist is provided to him okay so that means that he he doesn't forget any point okay and he doesn't skip any point because when somebody 
audits it mm-hmm. or uh, reviews it mm-hmm. in our back office we know that things are as planned second if there is a problem there is an image that is taken okay and then you have an annotation as to exact point where the problem is mm-hmm. and there's a description okay okay so nice. you, every snag or problem has got an image an annotation and a description of the problem so it's very clear it's very clear and okay. it's a ge- automatically generated report okay okay so as soon as it's uploaded the report is generated and perfect because we are able to collect all these points we can give statistics okay to our home buyer and to the builder if necessary and this also has a thermographic camera images with analysis and moisture meter so the report is holistic oh wait so you mentioned these two three devices can you just uh, bef- sorry to interrupt but can you just explain these again because i have never heard of these devices yeah, do, uh, do? do you want me to get the devices or shall i just talk to you about it uh what what would you say yeah. so yeah let's talk about it no problem okay. yeah. so what we have is these are thermographic cameras it is either a stand alone machine mm-hmm. or we can also have a plug in to the a uh, camera an android phone mm-hmm. and then you can take an image okay and because of the temperature variation mm-hmm. you can see whether it is an ir phone okay uh, an ir camera to see whether there is a temperature variation you can see if it's damp or not okay but but see, the i can't make out yeah yeah of course right? i can't see this so, yeah so and that's we use that technology and then we take an image mm-hmm. and then we analyze that with software in mm-hmm. the back office mm-hmm. and we use moisture meters so because of conductivity mm-hmm. you can see if it's more moist there is higher conductivity is less moist mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. lesser conductivity so you have moisture meters that shows the degree of moisture the percentage of moisture okay. so in conjunction you know how moist a okay. certain location is and the ir camera shows where the moisture is perfect so in conjunction we give a report Along well, this with, is part of your app. I mean, no, it's not today. It's not part of the app, mm-hmm. but we are working towards making it. But today we are using two different features. But then the report has got both information. Okay, so the final report generated. So you mentioned that this particular app has a checklist. I mean, can someone else download and do it with themselves? Um, <laughs> a lot of people talk about it. It's a fair question. Yeah. Um, we've all seen this this cooking show, right? What is it called? Um, that it's very popular on TV now. Uh, where all these cooks come and in the home master chef master chef yeah then there is this very famous chef blumenthal uh, okay. he he does this high end uh, uh, jugglery with food yeah he's got a cookbook okay okay it's out would you be able to buy that cookbook go to your kitchen and cook <laughs> like he can <laughs> of course not we are my checklist is out okay not everybody can do what we do Okay. It takes experience. Correct. It takes knowledge. Take it takes the eye. It takes the eye. It takes the breadth of experience that we have. Correct. And the depth of knowledge that we have. Okay. Just because somebody has got a cookbook, they can't cook like Blumenthal. <laughs> Just because somebody has downloaded a checklist, they can't do the exact inspection. Yeah. Nice. That's that's good <laughs> to know. Okay. So. So that's how you use tech. That's how, that, that's one thing, and there's another app uh, which a lot of so a lot of people. earlier asked uh, what is home inspection right people oh. didn't know okay so we have this free app that's available for anybody who is a diy enthusiast mm-hmm. can download and try it out so they get a flavor of what home inspection is oh okay and, and there is a free app yeah there is it's on google play it's called d snag okay. d s n a g apostrophe okay so they can download it test it out play with it and see what it is and once they're convinced mm-hmm. they can always get in touch with us and we will provide the professional part Perfect. of the inspection for them that's wow that's good to know so yeah there is a there is a reference point if that's yeah. the right word where what you would do or what you know what sort of services so it's do. like when you go into a restaurant right it's your menu card yeah <laughs> yeah that's nice or nice or when you go to the pani puri wala he'll give you a little say a bit <laughs> <laughs> tikka coffee hai ha sweet coffee hai yeah. then when you say ha then he'll mix the whole thing and give it correct so nice that's good to know now i wanted to understand this uh you have you have analyzed 2000 projects 2000 inspections home, sorry yeah. 2000 home inspections yes. apartments yeah uh and you told me that you know in some cases in a single tower you've been able to analyze so many different uh, apartments like 100 150 apartments in one project so i want to understand this i mean considering you have a tech background you you obviously do a lot of analysis on this data right we have data we have uh, analysis that we've done but uh, it's not published oh, okay. we don't publish it because we don't have uh, 
enough data to draw conclusions. Oh. We have a lot of points. Uh, okay. We have we have maybe more than a million million and a half data points. Okay. But that is not sufficient for us to draw conclusions because we need to get clusters of data points. Okay. Uh, we've, we've even started working on uh, AI for uh, image recognition. So mm -hmm. we've, we've tried, we've done a, a POC, mm -hmm. a proof of concept where we've been able to run images which have cracks. Okay. So the, the program was able to identify cracks on its own. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to see where we can update our app or upgrade our app in such a way that tomorrow it is not person dependent, at least for a lot of things. Correct, correct. So I can just have somebody download the app, he takes a video of the room and then drops it in like a Dropbox, mm -hmm. then we will analyze it and spit out the results. Perfect. Right, and that is that takes out subjectivity. Correct, correct, right? correct. Right, and yeah. also then it, it's a fast turnaround for the for the homeowner. Correct. So, uh, apart from this intelligence, right, I wanted to understand if uh, you were able to see certain patterns which you did not expect, right, in terms of, you know, like say, I'll give you an example of what I'm referring to. So say there's something which a lot of these, uh, even professional architects and civil engineers may not have seen, considering they say probably in their entire lifetime would do 200 projects. But in the in the three years, you have inspected almost 2000 projects. So uh, 2000 homes. So I would like to understand, you know, what are those sort of data patterns or points or some key things which you think even these professionals have missed yeah, out? So uh, we, we spoke of it briefly earlier. We were talking about screws on a hinge, <laughs> right? Yeah. Then we're talking about slopes on a balcony. Correct. We're talking about felt between two sliding doors uh, in a window or a door. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're talking about uh, in, a, in a door frame, mm -hmm. the top part being painted or not. Oh. Right? If that's not painted, you never see it. <laughs> Correct, right? yeah. But tomorrow, it may get damp, it may uh, it may bend, so things may happen. Then you have damp spots. Correct. Uh, because people don't charge the pipes before they take over. Okay. So if there is no water flowing in the pipes, there is dampness doesn't manifest. Oh. Right? So if somebody was to come in today and then you open the tap today, water will flow, you will check how water is flowing, there's no dampness, you'll go. Mm -hmm. But if I don't turn on the valve, mm -hmm. if I don't develop pressure within the pipes, there is no way for the pressure to develop and something to leak. Mm -hmm. Right? It takes two to three days for something to happen, at least two or three drops to come out. Okay. So for that, we always say, look, ask your developer to open the valve, let it develop, let it have pressure for two, three days, then call us. Oh, nice. Right. Okay. Nice. That's actually something which a lot of people would not think about. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Now, next, I wanted to ask you, there's a common uh, notion that the entire real estate sector has halted or it's, you know, it's ground <laughs> to a halt because of RERA and all these things. I mean, how, what has been your experience considering you interact with them on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, it's very evident that things have slowed down. Okay. Uh, it's not as what it was a couple of years back. It's clear that GST, then RERA, uh, your demonetization has had an impact. Mm -hmm. Things, But things are not ground to a halt per se, <laughs> but it is in first gear, not in fourth gear. Okay. So things are really slow. People are investing, people are buying things, but it was not as what heyday was, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. People, uh, builders, I mean, our parent company is doing still a lot of projects. We see right around the corner there are projects happening. But the sales are not what uh, one would have predicted. It okay. has slowed down a bit. Nice, okay. So, I guess, uh, I mean, I would like to know this one, one final question, which is, so someone's looking to buy a home, or is planning to buy a home or has bought a home and uh, what is something which you would tell to him that hey I mean apart from of course using your own services what, what are some things which he should keep in mind before going into that purchase or taking care of before taking over the possession yeah, obviously anybody who wants to buy something needs to get the legal papers checked right <laughs> that, of course. that even if it's Bangalore or Bombay or Hyderabad or Delhi or Chennai wherever before you make any payment, make sure that you get a lawyer mm -hmm. who knows what he's doing Correct. to check for the legal papers. Correct. And let it be a deep dive. Don't don't squint. Don't skint on that because you may 
end up paying him five ten thousand rupees, but it will save you two crores or a crore tomorrow. Oh wow! Because if you pay for a crore and then it's built on some other land, then you, <laughs> you can't right. So so yeah. that 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 is one. Okay. Then then two make sure that if now all the projects that are coming up are rera mm-hmm. mandated by rera, make sure that they are rera registered. And then they follow the rules. Is, is there some place where they can check this actually? Ah, uh, they can go to in, in Karnataka. You can go to the Rera website. So say Karnataka Rera on, on Google, and it will give you the website. You can go and check your. It has got a list of all the projects which have got complaints against them and com- projects that are Rera registered. So very oh, very wonderful. clear. Okay. Very 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 clear. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, you were saying. So yeah. You, so you that is one and um, common sense, right? Yeah yeah. Talk yeah. to people. And see, obviously, I can't. I can't always say that go to a builder who is established. <laughs> Even that builder who is established was not at certain point in time was not established. Correct. So it is something that you need to do your due diligence on. Correct. And make sure you have all the insurances in place. For example, you know that your papers have been vetted by a lawyer. The documents for the property has been vetted by a lawyer, mm-hmm. and all of that are in place. So, you know, and maybe if a bank has okayed. the land right so those are a couple of things that and obviously get get it checked get the property checked get your quality of workmanship checked go to nemadi.in <laughs> nemadi.in exactly <laughs> <laughs> perfect so thanks a lot it was it was insightful i mean i'm sure a lot of people didn't. I myself did not know a service like this is even possible for it but existed well we are, we are trying to <laughs> <laughs> so yeah thanks a lot uh it was it was interesting i mean especially the couple of things which is said where you know how builders can even skimp on screws <laughs> uh, well it you said skimp i said maybe over i oversight right so <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true so great thanks a lot uh, don't forget to check out uh, uday sir's website uh, n e m m a d i dot in dot i n yes dot i n yeah so that's that's about it see you guys in the next episode